Can you repeat that, please? Yeah, no problem. Uh, the ladder truck, truck six, 2018. Here's the send it. Uh, 107 foot aerial, 500 gallons of water. It has a pump. Here's LDHOs. So it's technically a pumper and a ladder truck. It can do both. Um, it's got a lot of cabinet space. Seat six guys. Um, any other questions on that, really? I think it's, I think that's good. Okay. Uh, engine two is just a engine tanker, so it carries more water than a typical fire truck. Mm -hmm. Here's 2,500 gallons of water. Has a pump. It can be classified as a pumper. Um, and it's going to be replaced soon. We have a new one coming in the next, hopefully, year or so. Uh, carries hose, all the tools, and seats four guys. Anything else with that? No, that's good. Engine three. This is our first new piece to most fire calls. Uh, just a standard pumper truck, a thousand gallons of water, sits six guys, and has extrication tools on it. It does run on the highway as well, so it draws a life. That's what I mean by that. Um, that's the gist of that. And the rescue is just a rescue truck. It's for anything rescue related will be on that truck. Mm -hmm. So it has all kinds of tools, literally every tool you can imagine on there. There's jaws of life, there's screwdrivers, pliers, torches, cribbing. Um, there's air packs on that. It can do everything but put out fire. There's no water on it besides fire extinguishers. All right. And then the medical side, there's two ambulances. This is the older one, this is the newer one, and they just go on it. medical calls. MVAs, stuff like that. Do you have any questions directed towards the ambulance? What type of equipment is inside these right. ambulances? So you have all kinds of stuff. There's these stretchers now, they're all automated, so you don't have to lift, it's all touch of a finger. So you don't have to break your back. The technology is awesome with the stuff now, you just hit a button and it goes down. That's pretty much it, and then you hit a button and it goes back up. Other technologies that Beacon Hose has is we have a Lucas machine, which is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with C CPR at all. But, so a Lucas machine is an automated CPR machine, so you're not physically doing this, the machine does it for you, which at the end of the day, it helps out a lot when you're low manpower kind of crew. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a 12 lead monitor. So essentially what that is, if somebody's having a heart problem, we could take a picture of their heart and send it to the hospital. So the hospital can be prepared how to deal with that before we get there. So that starts things earlier to make a better outcome, hopefully, in the end, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's really the big equipment wise. I mean, everything else is just band-aids, blood pressure cuffs, stuff like that, splinting stuff. I mean, do you have any other questions? Ruben? Do we have anything relating to the like, ambulances and vehicles? Right, so, should we just ask like some of the questions we have here first? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what are your experiences working here at the firehouse? My experience, personally, yeah. like, what do you mean by that? Like, what are what are some of the things you do day to day here? Day to day. So when I come to work, you never know what your day is going to be. It could either be a quiet day or it could be a very very busy day. There's no prediction of what you're going to do. So obviously we have stuff that we do every day. We go through our ambulances, we check, make sure everything's all set to go through the day, every single day. And then same thing for the fire trucks. We check, make sure our equipment's ready for the day. So we get there and we're not dealing with equipment that's not working. So there's daily checks that we do to start our day. From there, it goes out, we do training, we go out and do public relations stuff. Um, and we just go over the stuff we need to do every day. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I could go on 10 calls a day, I could go on zero. It's, you know what I mean? It's hit or miss. So, yeah. Uh, see, yeah, we do it. Okay. What are some of the specialities of each vehicle? Like, you said, like, well, obviously, like, ambulance is like, medical emergencies. Like, yep. In what certain situations do you, like, use any of the other like, So, the rescue truck is, I would say, is a specialized unit. I mean, it's just a rescue truck. So there, it has lifting capabilities. If somebody's been underneath the car, there's equipment on there that can lift somebody, the car up off of somebody. We can, get, we can secure a car that's on its side using the rescue jacks. And that's really what the rescue truck's for. I mean, it's got almost everything you would need on it to do anything rescue related. 
No, it doesn't have everything, but it almost has everything. I mean, everything's different. So you never know what you're gonna run into. Uh, there's stuff that we don't have in this building right now. We do are part of a Region 5 dive team. So we have some divers and some water rescue equipment that's in a trailer of the other firehouse. That's just another small specialty thing. So it's all the teams in Region 5, which consists of mostly Litchfield County and some of down in New Haven County, and that's pretty much Region 5. The only other specialty vehicle, I mean, a pumper is a pumper, a tanker just carries more water. There's a ladder truck, and the only specialty with that is you have a 107 foot ladder to reach high places for ventilations on roofs or rescues out of windows or whatever you need it for at the time. So, what are some of the strangest emergencies you've had to respond to? In my career, I would say, not necessarily in this town, but I've done horses stuck in rescues, cows stuck in pools. I mean, it's a little different. It's something you don't expect every day, but that's the gist of that. We've had animals stuck in pipes and stuff like that. Those kind of rescues, it's a little different than what we deal with every day. Every day. Yeah, so like if it rains a lot, next thing you know, a horse is stuck in the mud, they fall down, they, they're stuck to their stomach. Somebody's got to get them out, otherwise the horse won't make, you know what I mean? So stuff like that, and like there's been instances where there's been a cow that somehow gotten into a pool and a cow can't figure out how to get, like you can stand in the shallow water, but you got to figure out how to get it out because you can't figure out how to get itself out. Stuff like that. I mean, lately I've seen a lot of bears versus car accidents too. I live up in Litchfield County, so that's what's going on up there a lot, but that's probably just some of the strangest stuff that I can think of quickly off the top of my head. Um, what do you know about the history here? I'm fairly new here, so I don't know about a ton about the history. Connor can probably answer the history questions better than I can. He's, I've, I've been here a little over a year now, so I don't have too much on the history aspect. Right. Uh, what are some of your favorite events here? Like, like the carnival or the fire prevention? I like doing fire prevention stuff. I like being involved with the community. So I like going, we were just at the high school last week for a career day. I like doing stuff like that. Try to draw the young crowd into this type of work, whether it's fire, EMS, whatever. Public safety in general. And so. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Cool. So the history stuff, Connor could definitely help you with that. If you guys have any questions, do you want the ladder truck outside to take a picture? I have no problem doing that. Also, yeah, for the bottom problem, we need to take a picture of us, like, in front of the place. Yeah, so. we could do that. Yeah. I'll take the ladder truck outside. We can take a picture in front of the ladder right. truck. That works. You guys want the ladder up in there? No. Yeah. Yeah, no, it'd be, it'd be cool. I can do it. It's no problem. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Sure. Okay, so if you're doing that, I'm going to start writing down some of these. Well, you can get the history of Connor. I'll set it up. It'll only take me five minutes. All right. All right. I'll be out back. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take the phone. Uh -huh. hey, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah start writing some stuff down. And just get ready. Uh, Connor, you could tell us about um. I forget his name. What was his name again? Brandon. Brandon yeah. Uh, he was. He couldn't tell us. About too much about the history, so can you tell us about the history? The Beacon House Company? Um, Firehouse. Actually, can we come in? Through? It's a little hard to hear you just that. I hear you. I have myself don't know too much about the history itself, but luckily for me, we keep a nice log of everything. Uh, so, I mean, we basically started here, uh, if you guys know, the uh, mill used to be a shoe factory, uh, so we were the firehouse for that shoe factory, uh, and then over time, you know, the town grew and so did the department. Uh, so we've been here for, we're almost, I think we're almost coming up on our 25 year anniversary. Uh, 
So we've started, uh, it, you know, started with the volunteers in that aspect, you know, they would come uh, directly from the factory, you know, come grab, you know, whatever apparatus we had at that time and then go to whatever the call was. Uh, and then over time, we uh, started running ambulances when uh, that started, uh, you know, coming to light in, you know, life. Uh, you know, we got a, a Hearst donated from some funeral home, and that was our first ambulance. Uh, and then over time, you know, we got another ambulance and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, let's see what else I can talk about. So uh, let's see. So we were formed on May eleventh of eighteen ninety nine. This firehouse was built in uh, well, let's see. Uh, We've had lots of uh, different apparatus over the years. Uh, our current oldest one we have is our antique sea grave. It's a uh, 1929 sea grave. Uh, now it just operates as a parade piece. But once, you know, a while back it was in motion. Uh, and I mean, just the service itself has grown over. Uh, you know, before it was, you know, only four men and charter members from the uh, factory. And then it turned into, um, you know, accepting outsiders um, for a while. It was, one second. Uh, Beacon Oath Company. Beacon Oath Company. And then for a while we uh, only accepted in-town members and then we started to expand to let Naugatuck residents in, you know, any surrounding towns in. So over the years we've definitely grown as a department. Um, you know, we used to only have a small, uh, I believe it was only a two-bay firehouse, and then we expanded to allow more rigs in. Um, and, you know, now we have, you know, engines, a rescue, a truck all this other stuff. Um, we do now uh, all water operations. Um, you know, we have a trailer dedicated to that. We have a tra trailer dedicated to wildland stuff uh, and all that type of stuff. Is there anything specific you guys are looking for? In I think you summed everything up perfectly. And I know I, I wasn't able to tell you much history, but I know if you guys go on our website, there's a lot of pictures and history on that stuff. So. All right. Thank you. No problem, guys. Thank you. It's all set up for you. Jeez Louise, it's gigantic. I don't think we need to go that high. Ah, <laughs> uh, we need to go that high. <laughs> it's wonderful. Technically, that's not even all the way up. If I could bring the angle up like this. Yeah, it's not even. It's not even 90 degrees. Have you ever had to go 90 degrees? It's not really safe to go 90 degrees, so it's not really ideal. There's nothing that we would really do that would be 90 degrees. There's no harness when you're climbing, so you're climbing and when oh, you you're stop, just... 
when you stop, you can flip in, but when you're climbing, there's no safety. But when you're straight up and down, it's just unsafe and there's no real reason for it. When we're going on access to roofs or whatever, just, we couldn't even really get off the ladder if it was straight up there. So it's not really safe. We try to do things the most safe way as possible. There's no guarantees, but that's at the end of the day, we try to do things very safely. That's good. So this is where the hose are put in? So this is a cross lane. This is what we go inside. This, these are the lines we would pull to put a fire out on this truck. There's one in the bumper. It's called a crash line. So it's just a shorter version of that. But yeah. ideally, if you go to any interior fire or something that's more long distance in the woods, you typically got to pull that. So there's this cross lane. There's two and three quarter diameter, two of those, two and a half diameter hose. So two and a half to get for the water. Bigger diameter from more water to the water. And then just up on the top, that's where the five inch hose is. That's just supply line. So it's just supply with fire filter to the water that added water that needs to use the suppression. And that's just a pump and chunk. So each flavor control is a different water source and it does something different to the water. Yeah. You'll put up in a gap up like a child and it's fun. Most incidents we have meters, meters, gases, like chill, propane, stuff like that. And all the air packs are in there back. If you want to see what an air pack looks like, we're going back here. Take them to the seats. It's really cool. The ladder can also spray water out of the top. Oh, yeah? Kind of in the situation. You see the pipe going right up there with that nozzle? Yeah. Put away from the top. Mm -hmm. That sun in my eyes does not feel good. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Those are the outriggers for the ladder. Without that, it's Yeah, so, I mean, you. It won't let you continue to keep all these new trucks this hard. I mean, I'm sure you could look it over and get more you're doing, but they provide the computers and trucks that prevent you from doing stuff that the truck will The truck itself is As well as the operator, the training and experience, the operator should know the limitations of this So that's just, there's three outriggers, one on this side, one on that side, and one on the other side. The ladder truck's different, but that's not just one truck. That ladder to rotate 360 degrees. I can bring it down to the ground. That's really pretty much it. Let's see this. I think we're pretty good.